Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing great. David Locke here. So it's kind of a crazy day here in Oakland, California, because there is a trial going on from a New Year's Eve killing in which a police officer killed an African-American. And the sentencing is going to come out of an L.A. County court today, and it impacts Oakland greatly. It's been polarizing the community. So there are all sorts of precautions being taken in Oakland. The streets are People are being kind of told to stay off the streets as the sentencing comes down. As I'm recording this, the sentencing has not come down yet, and we're not sure what time it's going to be. For the jazz specifically, I'm not sure what impact it has. This is a unique circumstance where the hotel we stay in is connected to the Warriors training facility. So for a shoot around this morning, the team literally just comes out of their hotel room, goes down the elevator, walks across a lobby in a hallway, and ends up inside the gym for a shoot around inside the Warriors practice facility. Uh, busing system to get to the arena today. We're taking one bus rather than the usual two, which may or may not be related. I haven't checked them, but that's the reason why. Uh, but that, that is going on here in Oakland and, and is the biggest news story. Some of the businesses in town have, have kind of boarded up and are preparing for, unfortunately, potential riots. Uh, I don't think it's going to be Rodney King-esque as for the Clippers playoff series the Jazz went through and they had to move it down to Anaheim. But there is a large level of concern. It's a uh, Oscar. If you want to read about it, you can search the Oscar Grant killing, and um, it's on Wikipedia. It was a New Year's Eve event where a white police officer shot and killed a uh, African American young man who was not armed in a BART station, which is their rapid transit. So that's kind of the side story here. Shoot around today. Paul Millsap uh, did go through shoot around. Ron Boone uh, tells me he's going to play today. I just talked to some people. The Warriors, Steph Curry, is currently shooting on the side of shoot around there. Um, and they don't sound like it's very likely he's going to play, but he has a game time decision. He could feel better uh, earlier today. The Warriors are red hot. They're shooting number one shooting team in the NBA right now. Monte Ellis is obviously largely behind. He's had some huge free throw attempt days, 16 one game, 19 another. The other thing that's happened with the Warriors is with Key Smart taking over for them, they're playing a much more traditional style. Andres Biedrin's David Lee on their front court, so they're normally sized. They're not, it's not the whole undersized, trying to trick you warrior game that Don Nelson used to play. And then the youngster, Darrell Wright. So you may not have heard of Darrell Wright. He got drafted about five, six years ago as a high school kid, about the 19th, 20th pick of the draft for the Miami Heat. He's always been a decent shooter, not much else. Well, the Warriors signed him in the offseason. He has been amazing for them. He hit six threes in one game, seven threes in their win over Memphis. He's averaging 20 points a game. He's burying the corner three and is a guy that is adding them to another scorer. So if, if you know, Monte Ellis is averaging 30 a game, you got Darrell Wright at 20, you got David Lee who's a double double guy, Andres Biedrin's the big guy in the middle. And then if Steph Curry goes, you got another 20 point guy. So the Warriors really are a bona fide offensive team. They have not been very good. Uh, defensively let, yet. You can see that in the insider report and some of the numbers I gave you there. For the Jazz, the battle of the Warriors has always been, can the Jazz structure out do the Warriors up and down game? But frankly, so far this season, the Jazz and Warriors have been equally paced teams. They both play pretty quickly, and we'll see whether or not the Jazz can take advantage of it. Darren Williams is really the key to this one. Who's going to possibly guard him? Monte Ellis isn't good enough defensively. And then the flip side, I think, for the Jazz is to find out whether or not Raja Bell and Earl Watson can defensively do some things the Jazz haven't been able to do before guarding up against a bona fide scorer like Monte Ellis. Pre game, 8.30 tip off uh, for you, Mountain Time, 7.30 here. Pre game, Jerry Sloan show comes to you an hour and a half before the game. So we'll have that for you as well. So stay tuned and then also get fired up for the Utah TCU game. Let's hope the youth can pull off a surprise. All right, if you're, uh, we're home Saturday against the LA Clippers. If you want tickets for that one, go to jazz.flashseats.com to get some of the best seats in the house. That's jazz.flashseats.com. Have a good one.